So welcome to PHP My Admin Tutorial by Dieter Isaac Mark und Hörslern. Uh, hi and welcome to the PHP tutorial, PHP, by, PHP My Admin Tutorial talk. Uh, thanks for introducing us. Uh, so basically, we'll uh, we'll give a talk a tutorial about how PHP My Admin works. Uh, and we'll also explain what PHP MyAdmin is. So my first question to the audience, who knows PHP MyAdmin? Right, that's quite a few people, almost everybody. Who has ever used it? Right, that's all the majority, but I'm going to the introduction anyway, so. So what is PHP MyAdmin? Uh, basically, it's a web interface to manage a MySQL database. Uh, MySQL database, uh, you, can think, uh, you can think of this as in a broad way, so it's actually the entire ecosystem. So also, not only the MySQL, original MySQL database, but also the MariaDB and the Drizzle, uh, Drizzle database, which are derived from uh, the original MySQL. Uh, it's a, it is a web interface, so it means that it's, uh, the software is running on a, on a web server and communicates with a MySQL database either on the same server or on a separate server, it doesn't matter. And you interf interface, uh, you interact with the interface using your web browser on your own PC. Uh, it's written in PHP, uh, and more and more JavaScript is being added over the years because we, we're using more, we're relying more and more on JavaScript to make the interface more dynamically uh, with AJAX and forms and dynamically updating of data. Uh, you can use it to uh, browse the information that's on the server, right, to, to access tables and, and uh, uh, see what's in it and update data and change data. But you can also use it to, to manage the, to the server, for instance, to manipulate or to change the user uh, access levels for the, for the users. So basically that's about it. Uh, we exist for 15 years now in September. Uh, our last re major release was uh, in, in March of this year, so currently we're at version 4. Uh, and version 4.1 is in development. It will probably be released somewhere in the spring of next year. Uh, the package we get is ships with uh, t about 20 languages, and several of them are being translated, but we only uh, add the languages that uh, or uh, translate it enough so that we, they can be added. So how to get it? Uh, of course, on our website, you can download the package. It's also available for a lot of distributions. Uh, it's available in, in Debian, for instance, but also in, in Fedora and, and uh, in other distributions. Uh, it's also part of a lot of packages like SAMP, WAMP, and cPanel. And of course, you can get the latest version uh, on our Git repository. So that's for the introduction. I will now show a few basic features of, uh, of uh, PHP MyAdmin. So if you go to the login screen, you see something like this. You just log in with your username. Uh, this is actually the username uh, that's defined in the, My in the MySQL server. So PHP MyAdmin does not uh, have a separate list of, of usernames and, and user privileges. It's, uh, it uses the, the credentials you have and the rights you have uh, in the, that are configured in the MySQL database, uh, database server. So you just log in, and then you get something like this. On the left side, you can see a navigation panel listing all the, all the databases, and you can click on them to, to show the tables. And on the right side, you see the information you are actually looking for. So I will first show you uh, how to create a database. So you go to databases. That makes sense, I think. And then in the create database uh, field, you just type a name. So I'll add test tutorial. And then create. And as you can see, in the list here, the test tutorial database was added, and also in the, on the left side in the navigation panel. You don't see it yet because there's a feature that collapses uh, 
database, uh, databases that have, a sim, uh, have the same prefix. You can configure how this works, but uh, I'm not going into detail there. But you can see that the database is there. So now we'll go into that, dat into that database. And to create a table, I will minimize the navigation panel to have a bit more room. I'll create a table test and add two columns. And go. Should be busy. Oh, there it is. So now you can define uh, the type of table, uh, the type of, of columns. So I will create an index and a value. Value, I'll make a verger of eight. Here you can, with storage engine, you can uh, choose which storage engine to use. For this case, I will use InnoDB, but you can use any one you like. And then for index, I will define the primary and add the automatic indexing. And then save. Now the table is created. So if you go back, you'll see here that there is a test table. And if you go to struct, if you go to structure, you can see that we have an ID and a value. And if you go to indexes, you'll see that a primary index has been created for the ID, for the ID column. So currently there's nothing, if you click browse, there's nothing there. So you can, with insert, you can add data. Uh, because the index, index auto is automatically in created, I'm not going to fill anything in. Just I'll take foo and bar. You see that the ignore uh, thing was uh, automatically disappeared once you start typing in the second fields. So I'm going to insert two uh, records at once. So you can see now that they have been inserted. And if you go to the browse, you can see that there are two records now in the table. Another feature I would like, like to add, uh, show is uh, how to browse data. I'm going to take a different database because there are more tables there. So I'll go to the employees database. And tables. The PC is a bit slow. So, so here you see a lot of, uh, quite a lot of tables. I imagine you have a database, uh, you have a, a table with uh, 15 or 20 fields, but you're only in interested in three. But they're also at, they're at the back of the of the uh, of the list. Then they're not on the screen, and then it's it's difficult. So there's a possibility of dragging, uh, changing the order, so you can uh, move over it and drag it to another place, and then the, the column moves. There's also a possibility of. Uh, Hiding tables, so you press on this arrow, and then you get a list of all the tables, and just unmark the ones that you don't want, and then they disappear. Or you can just click on show all, and then they appear again. Another nice feature uh, that was added in version four is that you can edit that uh, record uh, like you would edit a spreadsheet. So you just, just double click on a, on a field, and then you can change the data, uh, change the, the records, hit enter, and then that field will be uh, will be updated. You can also use the edit button, but then you will get a big big form with all the with all the entries, and then uh, this is much more easier, much faster than using the edit form if you just want to change one, one record. So that was about uh, head adding and changing data. Now I'm going to show you a bit about user management. You have to go back to the server level. So there's a tab called users. It used to be called privileges in a previous version. So there you see a list of all the users that are defined for this database server. So with add user, you can create a new user. You will get a form. So you type a name, this tutorial. For any host, we'll take local host and then generate. You can, you can see that a, a password is generated. You're supposed to copy this and store it somewhere to be able to log in later, but I will not do this because uh, it's not necessary for the, for the tutorial. 
uh, you can define the, the rights that uh, the user has on, on the database, uh, the entire database server, so all the tables, but you can also, and I'm going to show, the, show you that after adding the user. So now the user is added, so you can see in a list, this tutorial, this user has been created, and if you go to edit privileges, and scroll down a bit, then you can see database specific privileges, and here you can select a database, for instance, a test tutorial database, and then you can grant all the uh, all the privileges on on that on only on that database, and then that user will only have access to that database, but not to the the rest of the server. Uh, so that's about it uh, for me. Uh, now Isaac will come up and will show you some more advanced features. Thank you. Hi, I'm Isaac, and I'm going to show you a couple quick ways that we can deal with foreign key relations. Within MySQL, uh, yes, within MySQL, there are, um, there's a way to create foreign key relations if you're using the InnoDB table type, and that's uh, one way that we work towards getting a normalized database. As you can see here in our example employees database, we've got a list of departments and also employees, both of which are simply the name and uh, the corresponding ID number. And then we've got a series of other tables which actually relate the data. Uh, it takes the employee ID and the department ID, and then uh, in this particular case it has, the, excuse me, the from and uh, to date for when the employee was associated with that department. And this is one of the ways that we uh, normalize the data so that if you have an employee who changes departments, you don't have to enter them twice into the employee database, you just create another entry here. So one of the things that we have that enables you to work with relations is the relation view. And if you go under the structure tab, you can see the relation view link right here. And the neat thing that phpMyAdmin allows you to do is to create a relation even if you're not using the InnoDB table through the uh, configuration storage feature, which is something that we set up to store um, additional features for bookmarking or user level preferences, or in this case, uh, relations. You can go through and you can define relations even if the uh, MySQL table doesn't support it by default. But anyway, here in relations, you can see that we've already got two defined, and uh, setting one is as easy as selecting it from the drop down and just selecting go. And in this case, we're going to turn on, oh no, we're not going to do that there. I apologize. We're going to go to departments, and I'm going to turn on the show column. One more button click away. The column to display is another feature that uh, Mark's going to get into a little bit, and I will show you also as well, that allows us to make inserting and displaying data much easier because when you go to when you go to the related data back in the department and employee database or I'm sorry the table that relates those together if we go to insert a row you'll see that there's a drop down provided where you can pick from if you know the text representation or the value you can simply select customer service, or if you know that it's ID number D005, you can select that from the list. So we give it to you both ways as the foreign key and the related key, and that makes it much easier for you to insert data on the fly. Now there's another way of working with relations that we've got, and that's called the designer feature, which is a graphical way, and in this case, it's stuck under the More tab. If you've got your resolution set higher, if you're not doing a presentation, for instance, this More tab actually expands out, and uh, that's dynamically based on the size of your, your display. So in this case, it's under the More tab, but it's down on the end for Designer. And when we open that up, that's going to give us a graphical representation of all of our relations in this database. And what you can do is move those tables around to a way that suits the way your data is displayed. For instance, I'm not interested in this log, so I'm going to minimize that and drag that out of the way. 
And now I've got a suitable representation of all of the relations between my database. And within this designer, uh, if I want to save this later, all I have to do is hit save, and it saves the layout on that page. And so the next time I go into designer, it'll save that specific layout. So anyway, when you want to create or remove a relation, it's quite easy. All you've got to do is, in this case, we'll remove this simply by clicking on the relation, and it pops up the little prompt if I want to delete a relation. And then to add a relation is as easy as selecting the Add button and then clicking between the two keys you want to relate. And in this case, it's asking me what I want to do if the foreign key is manipulated, and we'll re it didn't like that for some reason. So that's how you create the relation. within the designer. Uh, anyway, so you get the picture of that. Um, then the final thing that I'm going to show you about is the import and export uh, coordinates. What we can do is take the coordinates directly from this designer view and move them to a page for export as a PDF or SVG or DIA graphic file. And we're going to cre create a new tutorial page here. And then from the create a page and export to, and I thought that was selected. There we go. And then when we go back to the operations tab for that database, we're going to be able to export the entire database schema and the relation view as a PDF file. So here we're going to select the page that we just created, the tutorial. And once we select that, it's going to automatically fill in with all the coordinates in this text field. Now, I don't like typing the text field, and I have trouble visualizing those. So all I'm going to do is toggle the scratch board, and it's going to bring up a graphical representation again, very similar to the designer. And you can drag those around to match uh, your page layout and how you wish to export the page. And as you drag those around, it's going to automatically update the an x and y coordinates in these text boxes. So let's say we're happy with that. And we're going to come down here and select the export type. As I said, you can export as several different vector graphics formats. But I find uh, PDF the easiest for my purposes. And then if you're in a country that requires you to use letter or legal paper, you could select that there. We're just going to go PDF uh, A4. And this is going to export for us. And I'll show you in just a moment that it gives you a very nice view of all of your tables and all of the Excuse me one second. It's going to give you an overview of each type of data that's represented in each table. And then it's also going to show you all the relations. So I'm going to switch back to this and zoom in a little bit so you can see. There is the table of contents, which shows you each table in the uh, export here. And if you click on one, it scrolls you directly there. So when I click, uh, when, I'm sorry, when I zoom this in for you, you can see that the column shows each column has the type, uh, if there's a default, any extras, the comments, every, every bit of information you need to recreate this or to document your procedures. This makes it very easy to create a database and then see uh, for documentation purposes what exists in the database. And then down at the very bottom, we've got the list of relations between each field. And so this creates a very nice display that you can document for future generations and see what your database looked like. And now for a little bit more, I'm going to turn it over to Mark, who's going to do some more on the uh, advanced features of phpMyAdmin. Well, thank you. My name is Mark, and I will, I'm happy to show you four features today. The photo handling, how to insert or how to display a photo from the database. Also, how to do a Zoom search to, to have a big picture of your table. 
how to display relational data that Isaac just show, showed us how to, to relate them, but how we can benefit from this, and how to display geographic data from GIS support in MySQL. <coughs> okay, so let's start with the photo handling. We have our employees table right here. And we have inside it a column called photo. And the data type is long blob, which means that a MySQL database can hold also non-textual things, like, in a, like binary things like image or audio. Um, in the full structure of this column, we see that there is there are two extra pieces of information. One is the MIME type. So if we want to be able to display this data, we will select the image JPEG because we plan to put JPEG images into this column. And we also want to transform the data when we are browsing the table. So we want to apply an inline display. So we want to see the JPEGs when we browse the table. But now we don't have any pictures into this table. When we, we browse the table, we only see that the um, photo column is empty. It could contain blobs, but there are nothing yet. So we edit this employee. And what I'm going to do is to to pick a picture that is on my workstation. I will upload it into the row. So I will send it to the, to the web server, which will send it to the MySQL server. So I browse my file system locally. I will choose this picture here. So now it is set to be uploaded. When I click Go, it goes to the web server. And by the way, the web server could be, could, could not be not local. So it gener generated an update statement. And then when I make a little room here, when I browse the page, I see a thumbnail that is generated. It's not stored. It's generated on the fly. And I can access the full picture, too. OK, now uh, we'll go back to our list of tables. And in the employees database, we have a salaries table, which shows for each employee, the, the time when uh, it, it change, uh, when the salary changed. Okay. But looking like that, I don't see much information. I got the raw data, but I don't see the big picture of the, the trend of the salaries. So to be able to see that, I will go to search. And I'll choose Zoom search. So this will enable me to generate a plot of two <coughs> columns. So I'll pick the from date column and the salary column. And on the plot, I want to label each data point. So let's pick employee number as the label for each point. Now, if I have a huge table, Generating this plot could, could uh, use a lot of memory in my browser. So I should really restrain myself to a little number of rows. But it depends on your memory on, on your system, your, on your workstation. So now I see that I have about 100, 
data points. I see the trend of my salaries. They are going up. It, it's very, very interesting to see. But it's called zoom search because you can pick a region of the graph for this year, for, for example. And I have a more detailed information about the dots. I have the employee number that appears like that. And I, I can click on a dot to edit the, this row of data. And I, I could increase my salary and change it. But I won't do that. Next, I would like to show you the, how you, we can benefit from the relational uh, association we, we, we did between the employees and the department's tables. So in the department employees table, Now we see only the employee numbers and department numbers, only the keys. And what if I don't rem remember what is department five? One thing I can do if I just want to, to look at one department is to click and follow the link, which brings me to the department table for this department. And I can see here the name, but it could be telephone number or something. But uh, it's not very convenient if I need to do many, uh, many times the same operation. So let's use another way to, to be able to see all this related data at a glance. I will use a display option here, which is hidden by default. So by, <coughs> by default, we see the relational keys. If I click on relational display column, this is a column that describes a department or that describes an employee. So in this case, the department name and the employee name, last name. OK, um, my last feature is to talk about GIS. So GIS means geographic information system. So it's a system to, uh, to manage uh, data that relates to geography, like coordinates on a map. And uh, MySQL supports this kind of data, as well as normal text or numeric data. So let's open this other database. I have a table called capitals that contains the coordinates for each capital on, of the world, or many capitals, at least. And uh, here we only see that it uh, contains spatial data. It's uh, only uh, it, it's 25 bytes, but I don't see exactly what it contains. So again, we go to the display options, and we will use a format called well-known text, which is, uh, which is the markup language for uh, geographic data. So with that, we see that it contains point, point data with coordinates. And let's try to see what all these coordinates mean. So we can go down there and click visualize GIS data. So we see more or less the, con the form of the continents with the cities coordinates of the capitals displayed there. <coughs> to be able to better see the, where they are located, we will call OpenStreetMaps. And we, now we get a layer of, of the, the map. We have this kind of layer or a satellite-based layer, like that. And we can, we can zoom in if we want uh, down to the street level if, of each city. Thank you. I'll invite Ruslan.
Okay, thank you, Mark. And <clears throat> I will briefly talk to you about uh, routines and triggers and events in PHP MyAdmin, as well as the server status monitor. Okay, no. So who knows what a start procedure is? Raise your hand. Okay, well, everybody knows. So maybe I don't even need to explain. But well, anyway, um, it's. A feature of a relational database that allows you to store a bunch of SQL code on the server and then just call that code to uh, execute it. Okay, so in our employees database, we can navigate to the routines tab, which encompasses both stored procedure and stored functions. There's a few subtle differences, but I won't get into that. Now, to create a new routine, you can click on this link over here, and it brings up a dialog where we can fill in all the necessary data. But at the risk of this sounding like a cooking show, here's one that I prepared earlier. Here we go. It's a very simple one. It's called tutorial. And we have two parameters. We have an input parameter and an out parameter. And basically what this does is take the input parameter, increment it by one, and then uh, put it into the output parameter. So that's a very simple one, but stored procedures can be very complex, and they could even be hundreds of lines of code. OK, next we have triggers. Um, triggers are, again, a feature of MySQL that allows us to execute a bunch of SQL code whenever a certain event happens in the database. A very common use case for this is logging. So for example, I will show you that we have a trigger, again, in the employees database in the departments table. Now again, this can be found here in the triggers tab. And if we have a quick look at it, what we can see is that after every insert in the department's table, it will execute the code that you can see in the definition text area. And what it will do is it will insert a new row of data into the log table that will tell us when a particular department has been added to the system. So if I go ahead and insert a new row into the departments, and we put in as a number one, two, three, four, and we call it computing. So a new row has been inserted into the departments table, and we can go and quickly check if we have a new row in the log table. And as you can see, here it is. And in the timestamp, we can see that it's been inserted, well, roughly about now. And that's all about triggers. And moving on, we have events. Events, well, are something that allows us to execute, again, a bunch of SQL code, either at some point in time, or we can set up recurrent events that are triggered at selected intervals of time. Now, you can access them directly here, or we can also go to the database level and we will have a tab for events. Here it is right there. And we can see that there is an event already there. However, it will not be executed. Because in order for the events to work, the event scheduler must be enabled. Now, if you don't own the actual MySQL server, that might be a problem, because enabling it uh, requires the super user privilege. So here we have it. It's been enabled. And if we have a quick look at this event here, we can see that it's an event that will clear the log table at the end of this month for, for some reason. And we can also have recurrent events, like I mentioned earlier. And so if we go here into the add event and we change the event type from one time to recurring, we can see that the dialog changes slightly. And we can configure when we want the event to be running from to. And we can also specify how often we, we would like to execute it. 
Now that would be all about events. And again, moving on, I will just briefly show you the, our service status monitor. Now it can be reached from the status tab on the home page. And it will show on the, on the first page some statistics about the traffic and the connections and the processes of the server. Now there are also sub-tabs here that show other information. For example, the query statistics allows you to see what type of query is actually being run on your server. So here we can see that the most often executed query is of type select. But if we scroll down here, we can also see a pie chart, which visualizes that data nicely. Another thing that we can see here is the status variables. And we can use the, the information that is shown on this page to perhaps diagnose any performance issues that we might be having on the server. Also, we have a monitor tab. Now, this is uh, a fun feature because we get to see some charts that show us in real time what is happening to our server. Now, in the settings, we can change the refresh rate and the number of columns. Here, I have to change it because three don't actually fit on this tiny screen. So, we're just going to go for two. Now, we can see what is happening at the moment here. We can see um, the amount of queries that are being run, the amount of connections and the processes that are running, the traffic, system CPU usage, swap, and system memory. But you can also add your own charts. And to make this more useful, we can go into the setup page and change a few settings on the server. Now, this will slightly slow down the server. So as soon as you've finished analyzing what is happening on the server, you might want to turn this back off. OK, excellent. Now, what I'll do is I will just open up another table somewhere, and that should trigger a select statement. As we can see, there's been a spike right here, both in the traffic tab and in the questions tab. And what, what we can do at this point, we can get actually more information about what has been happening here. If we just click and drag, and we can select a particular time span. OK, that didn't quite work out too well. Let's try this again. Here we go. Now we can pull from the log what kind of queries have been running at that particular time. We can see there's been 87 select queries. And if we jump to the log table, it'll show us the information about the queries. Now, if you actually click on the individual queries, you can run an analysis that will tell you if it's possible to improve uh, the performance. And last but not least, we have the advisor tab, which runs a set of predefined rules against the server to diagnose um, if there might be any kind of problems on the server. OK, and this actually concludes our talk on the PHP MyAdmin. And thank you very much for listening. And I believe we don't actually have any time for questions. But if you're interested, we're going to be outside, and we'll, we can take them there. Yes, we have seven oh, minutes. Oh, we have seven minutes. Oh, that's brilliant. We're, five OK. Five. OK. Any questions? OK, that didn't really change anything, did it? <laughs> OK, thank you very much for coming and listening to us. Thank you.